happy tuesday to you all i hope all is well I'm not going to be on here too long so i'm just going to make this plain and simple so we finally got the ending results for the New York City's ranking choice of the primaries. It's not just only the mayoral race that everybody knows nationally, but it was also municipal, municipal um, offices. So, of course, everyone's concerned about the mayoral race. But before I get to that, the progressive candidate for the controller's office, he won, which I'm like, hmm, I ranked you as number four, but I wanted Brian Benjamin, my state senator, to be the guy, but unfortunately he wasn't. So... He didn't make the cut. Also, on the latter note, we have the first DA, a black DA of Manhattan District Office who will be taking over Cy Vance's job. So that's a plus for everyone. Uh, Alvin Briggs from Harlem, who also worked in a, um, the state attorney's office, the attorney general's office, is now um, the new DA. So I'm excited. Um, but the mayoral race, everybody want to know about that. So hello to everyone that's on here. So everyone wants to know, I said it from March, like late March, early April, from the way things were running on the ground here in New York City, that BK's ball president, Eric Adams, was going to win the race. Everybody online was rooting for either Maya or Andrew. And even somewhat Diane. I knew that was not going to happen. Unfortunately. Even though Maya was my first choice. And then she became my second choice. Either it was her or Eric for me. And I knew the turn that Maya was taking. In mid-March to early April. Was not going to lead her to the nomination. She did talk about defund the police. Which was not a popular slogan during the 2020 campaign. You know it was not going to be popular amongst the base that you were trying to get, which was older black voters. Because those are the ones that go to primaries. And unfortunately, you wasn't going to get them. It sucks to say because this was her race to win. She was one of the first people to enter the race. She ran a campaign centering herself around her life experience as a black woman. More so a biracial woman, but she's mostly black. Raised as a black woman who had a civil rights dad who was murdered at when she was nine years old you center your campaign around your experiences you were going to black neighborhoods i don't know what happened between march and april but what i do know is this was her race to win hey Enrique, this was her race to win many people wanted to see her win black women wanted to see her win the problem was she started catering to leftists white leftists they're not people that go to primaries that often it's more so older black folks people like my mom's age who is like over 65 people that's church mother's age 70 80 even some 90 year olds that still live in new york they go to primaries they bring people with them they register people to vote half of them work at the polls and what I've been hearing on the ground, I've been hearing a lot of Eric Adams, then Maya Wiley. I didn't hear too much of Catherine Garcia amongst older black folks because Catherine didn't bring her ass to the black community. I knew Catherine was going to win. I'm surprised that Catherine even was at the top level. And the only reason why she got up there was because of older black folks. And... Here was the stumbling, another part, problem in the Wiley campaign. There were a lot of Elizabeth Warren alumni that worked for her campaign. That's not a winning strategy in New York City. She should have had the playbook from the Biden team, as someone said on here. She didn't take that route. I understand you're a progressive, but... At the same time, you have to cater to the people that shows up to the polls that deliver for the Democratic Party. And that's older black folks. And Maya lost her way on that towards the ending of the campaign. Hi, Kay. How are you? And trust me, 
I love Maya, and I still like Maya to this day. I love her as a commentator. I even liked her when she ran her campaign. To me, her and Eric ran one of the most effective campaigns out of all the candidates there. She, they did. They did. However, I didn't like the people that also worked for the Wiley campaign either because some of them were anti-democratic establishment, which is the key term of older black voters. Those are the people you need to show up for you. Those are the people that save democracy for us time and time and time again. They warned us in 2016. They warned us in 2018. They warned us last year. And they're going to keep warning us until it's their time to go to the kingdom. And you know what the kingdom stands for. So, yeah. So, I hope Maya does run for office still in New York. If it's not in the city or in the state. I pray that um, Mr. Cuomo will retire next year. I pray that AG was going to um, run for governor. And I hope Maya runs for attorney general. Because she'll be a better lawyer for the state. I can see that happening because she's still young. Her time is still not over yet to be in public office again. It's just so sad she worked for a horrible administration, her and Catherine. I mean, if they had to run for mayor, you can tell that the de Blasio administration was very toxic. It's a toxic work environment. Read your comments. I knew Eric was destined to be mayor having met him when he was a detective. And also, he was one of the city officials that actually handed out masks during COVID-19. Didn't that peak of COVID. Where was the mayor? Where was the, the public advocate? I have no idea. And I voted for the public advocate again because there was no great candidate for public advocate. But this man better be doing right by people because, trust me, he will have a problem on his hands. You think this time will be, worth, uh, will be bad? It will be worse than what it was before. But Eric did ran a cohesive campaign. Eric went to black and Latino neighborhoods. He even went to some projects, some housing projects, and was not scared to go. Like Catherine was. Or Andrew. Andrew didn't go. You know you have to reach black people to deliver you when it comes to the democratic primaries because people my age unfortunately don't go i'm one of the few young people that go to primaries so overall i'm gonna just sum this up and i'm gonna move on to something else defund the police medicare for all green new deal is not going to win elections no matter if the city's progressive or if your district is predominantly blue. It's not a winning message. It proved last year it wasn't a winning message and it's proving in this race is not a winning message. Because those same leftists, only 13% of them are the voting base. And out of that 13%, only 6% probably went to the primaries and voted. And it's the truth. At the end of the day, who goes to primaries? Older black folks, 50 and up. 65 and up turns out overwhelmingly. They also work at the polls. I know a lot of the church members that I go to church with, they work the polls and they get like a good paycheck. They get like $250, $300. Or 400 they get a good paycheck they do what's up app that's a fact but enough of this this race because I'm, I'm tired I'm just glad that now it's over all this is about November that you got to turn out because I know this this other guy this Republican guy he's a joke so I already know I, in my head I got to register as mayor Adams in my head so and we don't know what kind of mayor people are going to turn out to be 
you don't know i i thought de blasio was going to be the best thing that happened no de blasio ended up being a shit show if your approval rating is worse than the governor who got problems then that's bad all those whites facing police unions that failed to support Addis are going to go through some things. Oh, for sure. I have a feeling about the SBA, which is the biggest police union here in New York. It's like, when, like the biggest. They're not going to endorse him. They're going to give him problems. They're going to treat him like shit. So all those people saying he's a cop and everything. He was a cop. Yes, but doesn't mean all cops get along. Because there's racism in police departments and unions, especially SBA, one of the most racist police unions in the country. So now the fact is that Patrick Lynch is still the president of SBA. Mm hmm. And, um,. Pretty much, they're not going to back Adams. They're going to give Adams a more tougher time than they gave Bill de Blasio, Michael Bloomberg all together. Because one, he's black. And two, there will be some reforms. And a lot of these white police officers have problems with black people. Even if it's Maya Wiley, they would have gave her more problems. White New Yorkers are a problem. The ones that were mostly born here, they're a problem. So I have, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but anybody black in power, no matter if it's a man or a woman, whether we like them or not, you got to worry about the white New Yorkers who still have their racism. And, I, and, and I'm going to keep it real. I don't trust most of them. Not even the ones that's so open-minded to the left. Because they will vote at the end of the day with their pockets. And not for the interests of the people. So I... I'm leery. I'm nervous. Because the city tends to side with problematic white men. They do. But enough of this mind because I'm tired. I don't want to be on and off about it. Because I said I didn't want to talk about this too much. And that's another thing. And let me just say to all the folks that's not from New York. I got to address this. Because I'm seeing a lot of, of comments on Twitter. Let me just tell y'all something. Your faves didn't win. It's real life. It's what's on the ground. People of the city decide who's going to run. That's like me chiming in on the Ohio um, District 11 race. As Nina Turner's a mess, at the end of the day, it's about who is going to vote for Chantel Brown? Who's going to vote for Nina Turner? And there's another guy in the race, too, because it's, it's a third person in the race. I'm not saying anything about that, because why? Because I mind my New York business. So if you're mad that your face is in there, I don't know what to tell you. I knew Andrew Yang wasn't going to get it. And Maya had a, 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 um, a chance to, but she messed that up herself. At the end of the day, it's about ground game. How are you running your campaign on the ground? Is your message resonating with the people? You got to have a message, a cohesive message that resonates with the people. Speak to the issues that affect the people. Not a small percentage and not your fan base. You can not legislate on Twitter. That goes for any office. You cannot legislate on Twitter. 
Because it's not real fucking life. So if you're mad that your faves didn't win any positions or any elections, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not here to hold your motherfucking hand. I'm here to speak the facts and speak the truth. And the truth is, y'all faves, ground gang, did not win them the elections that they were supposed to win. So it is what it is. Or mess with the recall. And, Cal and that's another thing too. I'm not getting involved. That's 3,000 miles away from where I live at. I got nothing. I, I got nothing to say. I got, I got nothing. Because why? I don't live in California. I have nothing to say about California. Because I don't live there. Y'all got y'all shit on lock in California. So I got nothing to say for California. I don't even got nothing to say for my mother's home state in South Carolina. Because I have nothing to do with that. All my, all, my cousins, all my cousins where they live at in Georgia. I got nothing to say for that. Not even in Maryland. Who's running for me? I, I mean, for, for um, governor. Because why? Or New Jersey, which is the next state over me. Cause why? Because it has nothing to do with me. I don't live there. I live in New York City. That's where I live. Born, bred, still live here. I got to worry about shit that goes on in my home. We got a mayor race this year. We got a governor's race next year. So that's what we got to worry about. So that's what it is. Now, I said before, I made another prediction. I don't want to make myself sound like the Oracle because I know I'm not the Oracle. But I damn sure said that all of these progressives will be going through their shit. And I was right about it the whole damn time. So I said this from before that they're fighting amongst themselves like Jank Uger and Jimmy Dore. They got this beef going on about which news is real, which news is fake, which which is this, which is that, which is this, which is that. Like, y'all the same motherfuckers who cohesively trash the establishment voters, a.k.a. the black base. The same people that got so much smoke for black elected officials in the Democratic Party. The same ones that got smoke for the first female vice president who was black and Southeast Asian and the white guy who picked her to be his running mate. The same white guy who has a recidivism, the recidivism enacted the recidivism bill in 2007 to reverse his crime bill that he wrote in 1994. Can we go in? The same black, the same white man who has more of a connection with black folks than your white progressive savior who was originally from Brooklyn, moved to Vermont to not be in a multicultural diverse area, but claims to have a civil rights record. And for the last fucking time, Y'all need to stop showing that woman's husband's picture, not Bernie Sanders' wife, not James Sanders that said, I mean, James Sanders that said that, but the other lady. Stop showing that man's picture because that's not Bernie chained to that black woman. That's somebody else. He's lying to you guys. Because like John Lewis said, he never saw him. Jesse Jackson I don't know if he saw he endorsed him, but who's to say he ever saw him? Nobody never saw him. Nobody. So y'all need to cut that shit. But they fighting amongst themselves. Rihanna Gray. She's going through it because I said Rihanna Gray and her unwashed bro socialist ill criticized the hashtag 1619 project just like the white people on the far left. But I mean the far right. But I guess Howard University saw it differently than them. So I wonder who feels stupid now. 
Brianna Joy Gray. Because as she's criticizing the 1619 Project and critical race theory as of yesterday, Howard University is proud to announce Nicole Hannah-Jones and Tana Nashi Coates will join the HU family to help educate the next generation of black journalists. The appointments are supported by nearly 20 million donated by their donors. And I have a picture of the vice president laughing with a mic on because it's funny. You're the same person who criticized successful black women. You went after the, the then presidential candidate now vice president black elected congressional officials joy reed now nicole hannah jones who else black you gonna go after seems like brianna gray has a problem with her own race her massage nor is showing and it's disgusting no wonder why her ass is still unemployed Nicole Hannah-Jones is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. Something that Brianna will not achieve as long as she's nasty as hell. She's a Twitter troll. She is a certified Twitter troll along with non-blue checks like Ryan Knight. Like Nick the Fred Hampton Socialist. Still can't get over why he called himself the Fred Hampton socialist. Like, if I was Fred Hampton's family member, I would slap the shit out of him. From using his name and his legacy like that. But anyhow, you got a problem with successful black women. I don't know what it is. But then again, she's not connected to black culture because she doesn't talk about verses. Okay? Everybody that's black, whether you're on their left or right, you're talking about verses. Unless you're Candace Owens and Brianna Gray. They're not for the culture. And as for her co-host, of course he went ghost because he's a whole entire predator. A child sexual predator. Listen, I, I predicted this back in April. Three to six months, that podcast will be no longer. It's July. Where is Mr. Texas, a.k.a. Justin Cass. Where is he? Anybody know? Where he at? Not there. Nowhere to be found. So that podcast is surviving by, I guess, the string of the same guests. So now they're coming after critical race theory. Just like the people on the far right. Not a way to keep your podcast thriving. Like I said, polish that resume. Indeed, idealist. Monster.com is not that good. But idealist. Indeed, those are good websites. Like I said, she was a better person. She would have had a job at CNN or MSNBC or even Fox. Or serious XM, but you don't. Because you're just nasty. And you have a nasty personality. And that's why nobody's not defending you. Until then, boo. Good luck in life. I don't know if, if she's ever going to be looked at on LinkedIn. Who knows? And then you have this guy named Matt. Can't pronounce his last name, but... um. Matt felt the need to come for me back in April or May when he put out an article with the gray zone, which I don't even know what the gray zone is. I guess it's some far leftist propagandist journalism website, whatever it is. But he had the nerve to mention my name at the time and mention my other good bro's name at the time. But I found it joyful because I, I got this mention. I got it in my mentions. And I was like, ooh, nice. So I said this. Matt is going through some things because of his own stupidity. Trust me, this is not his first offense. Because according to Gmail, we suspended your channel 
for non-compliance with our partner programs. This may include community guidelines, violations, and cop or copyrights. They review they removed his video. Our team has reviewed your content, your content, and unfortunately, we think it violates our violent criminal organizations policies. We remove the following content content from youtube video mm-hmm him i said when he was hired as a staffer to the bernie sanders 2020 presidential campaign matt thought it was funny to doctor a video of dr king i have a dream speech and made it i have a wet dream which was very disrespectful to martin luther king's um legacy because that i have a dream speech is still one of the best speeches of modern time in addition to him doctoring a video of dr king he pretended to be a volunteer for the biden 2020 campaign by spreading lies about then candidate joe biden having dementia and that he's running for u.s senate during the 2020 2020 um, democratic presidential primaries first of all that video that was um that was doctor that was he was uh then candidate joe biden was talking about his time when he said when i ran for senate i always said this in my speech when i ran for senate now that i'm running for president didn't catch that doctor that video and due to him spreading misinformation about joe biden matt was cut off quote unquote cut off but then that did not stop Matt. One year later, he decided to write an article depicting me and other black supporters of Kamala Harris as toxic. So I'm just going to open up the article because I'm just going to read a little bit of part of this where it mentions my name. And I guess he has it here. He mentioned other folks name, but I'm going to go to the part where he mentions my name because he felt like he was so bold enough to mention my name like no tomorrow because where is my name because i saw it in here so here it is the LA, the la times reported that k hiver shante berry denied making threats when she tweeted a list of harris critics who may go through some things pretty soon. However, in a video published on Twitter, the paper, other K High so source, threatened everyone on Shantae's list. Nah. Something's about to happen to y'all. Y'all about to lose your motherfucking job. Well, some of them are losing their job. Every motherfucker on Shantae's list is a fucking revisionist and a white supremacist. The K High list of alleged white supremacists happen to be people of color. I think my list included only one, two people of color. Two. Everybody else was white on my 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 page. Jimmy Dora, Crystal Ball, Katie Hopper, Ryan Knight, Marianne Williamson, Anna Kasparin, Jank Uger. They're white. It was only two people that were black. And here it is. Yep. And so when I got this, I was like, this is not Matt's first offense. This is like his fourth or fifth offense. I guess it's like his fourth. Yeah. Matt is a struggling journalist, artist, whatever the fuck he is, videographer, whatever he is. He's struggling. He didn't get his account verified for a reason. And he was a staffer for Bernie Sanders. Most of the staffers for, for Bernie Sanders has a blue check by their name. Except Matt. Because why? Because he's a know-nothing ass, dirty ass, unwashed, socialist ass mother effer. Matt is trying to be something bigger than what he is which that's never going to happen because he's toxic and he's vulgar 
and disgusting. So me seeing this, that YouTube is suspending his channel, is a blessing. And now he's asking for Savior, his cavalry to come to save him. So support him on Patreon. Don't pay for that. Because you might get a lie. Because Matt is dumb. The intelligence is not up there. So my suggestion to Matt. It's time to grow up. It's time to um, get a real job. It's time to wash up. Like wash your face, wash your underarms. It's, it's, it's time. And get a real job. Because nobody is not looking for a person like you in this industry. Because why? Because you have a track record on bastardizing on great historical moments in history. Like fucking up the I have a dream speech. You will always be remembered for that. And spreading misinformation about then candidate, now President Joe Biden, that he has dementia. Nobody ain't fucking with you. So, Matt, clean up and get a job. And as to all of these um, so-called grifting-ass progressives, it's time to, for y'all to get a job. All of this grifting... And now the grift is drying up. You guys are fighting amongst yourselves. You guys are embarrassing yourselves on Twitter. And everybody's just laughing at y'all. Because they know you guys are not real life. We all know you guys are frauds. You guys are not about helping the average person getting out of poverty. You guys are worried about securing your finances. Your lifestyle. And keeping it up and maintaining it. Guess what? All of that dies down. Just because you're worth $44 million or however how mil million dollars you're worth, that can all go away. Everybody is a trust fund or a paycheck away from homelessness. You guys are. And I can see your grift is drying up. It's drying up already and we're, all, we're only in July. But I said this in april you guys or no march that you guys gonna be going through some things three to six months it's already the fourth month for most of you guys you guys have lost jobs your ratings are going down you're losing subscribers from patreon left to right you're losing followers september october or probably the next election you guys be done i don't know if you guys will pop up during the midterms next year but I highly doubt it too because then people will be over y'all already. Because you guys are not about the real progressive movement. Come on, you want to force the vote on congressional folks to cater to y'all? At the end of the day, their constituents are mostly black people. Those are the ones who put them in there. But it's comical for y'all to keep fighting. On. Keep fighting online. And I'm going to keep laughing and keep saying y'all going through things. Oh my God. It's hilarious. And that's for me. I don't want a Patreon account. I know that everybody keeps telling me that, Enrique. But I do this because I like the interaction with people. I like to do it for free. Because I actually want a real job. This is like a side hustle. Maybe sometime when I'm like 40 or 50, I would like to get paid for it. But I don't need to steal people's money especially this time around people are still trying to get back on their feet it's very hard for people but thank you for the suggestion but that's just not my thing i like to to read your comments and and interact with you guys that's what i like to do yeah they tearing each other apart and half of them being censored some of their channels are being suspended permanently suspended Yep, canceling each other out, calling people, you know, grifters, even though they're grifting themselves because they're trying to keep up their $1 million home. Hint, hint, hint. Um, <clears throat> what you call it? Um, 
Jimmy Dore. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Nice, Jackie. It's a bunch of toddlers in high school is completed to see who is going to be the bigger jerk. They all jerks. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Enrique. I appreciate it. I'm also on Twitter, too. But I am going to get ready to get ready. Um, Go to bed. Oh, yeah. Because I'm tired. And I got an interview tomorrow. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Check me out on Twitter space because I'll probably be on Twitter space tomorrow. And until then, you guys have a good night. Peace.